Okay, good morning, everyone. Everyone's bright and early. I hope everyone's all, you know, nice and caffeinated or got their tea, whatever it is. It's a pleasure to, to see you all. Thanks for joining us. It's, it's a real uh, pleasure to welcome uh, Carlos Minguez uh, back to GSAP. Carlos is a, uh, an alumni of the CCCP program. Um, and one of those people who had a, um, you know, when he was at GSAP, we all, we all already knew that he was going to do great things. And of course, you know, he did. And he went and um, he was at Storefront for some time as um, a curator there and then uh, co-curated the Oslo Triennial of Architecture, which brought him into the sphere of Scandinavia. Uh, and then he uh, became chief curator at ArcDes, which is the, um, the architecture museum of Stockholm and Sweden, the National Museum. There, he very quickly set up some incredible shows, a uh, number of publications, which are all listed in his biography, but some incredible shows um, having to do with some of the pressing issues that were happening in Sweden, but also more globally, uh, social, political, environmental issues, and how they really bear upon architecture uh, and how architecture can influence those issues. And in particular, he became very interested in the north of Sweden. And the north of Sweden, you know, Sweden, like Norway, is a very, very long country. And um, was essentially, you know, uh, inhabited by native peoples uh, and was colonized very much like the West of America was colonized um, by, let's say, white Europeans. Um, the North of Sweden was, was colonized as well during the 19th century. And they founded a city there, which was a mining city called Kiruna. And Carlos became very interested in it because they were in the process of undermining their own city. They were literally digging out the city and entered into a, a has just put up a really amazing exhibition, which I think just came down um, on all of the issues that this city's undermining brought up and the plan to move the city um, away from the mine. Uh, it raised all sorts of questions about preservation, which we thought were just so interesting. And this is why we invited Carlos. Um, of course, this is a kind of managed retreat and it is not the same as a climate change um, cause for managed retreat, but you, as you will see, the kind of tools and the questions that come up in managed retreat have to do with economics, have to do with social attachment to place. And those are the same, whether you're having to retreat because of climate change or you're having to retreat for other reasons. And so methodologically, the, the, the kind of methods and systems that were put in place in Norway really are um, a kind of, I'm sorry, did I say Norway? In Sweden, um, were are really a model for the, the rest of the world uh, in thinking about how to do this. Um, so it's really a, a, a great pleasure to welcome Carlos back uh, to Colombia and uh, in this virtual setting. Um, and um, uh, Carlos, I'll just hand it over to you. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Jorge, for, for the introduction and, and thank you for the invitation. It's an absolute pleasure to, to, be, to be talking uh, to, to the, well, to in, the, in, the, in the school that it's so important for me, but also about questions of preservation that I, I really became very, very interested in, in those issues precisely uh, by, by being at Columbia, by meeting also you, and, and by really, uh, really at, at thinking about how present and how relevant questions of preservation are in contemporary architecture today. And, and definitely some of those thoughts have been very relevant when, when I was like uh, starting to develop the research around Kiruna issues and, 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 the, and the, well, all the connotations that the, the current location is, is, is experiencing. So thank you, thank you so much and, and, and hello to everybody uh, in, the, in, the, in the audience. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen so we can, we can go through, through a presentation I prepared. Um, and, and we can see a little bit of the of about Kiruna. So let me go here. Okay. 
came. So, so yeah, um, Kiruna forever. <laughs> that's the uh, that's the title of the exhibition and the and the project that um, that as Jorge was saying, I've been working uh, I've been working on for like uh, yeah since I arrived to Sweden. That was like a maybe three years and a half ago, um, and and it's uh, it's connected precisely with uh, with some of the things that that Jorge was saying. Like uh, I used to, I organized like the Oslo Architecture Triennale with a uh, with the with a group of curators. And, and I started to really understand, like um, to be interested in the North as, um, as a project, right? Like the North as a place where lots of things are happening. And, and when, I'm, when we are talking about the North here is like the North of the North. Um, this, is a, this is the Arctic. Um, Kiruna is a city that is located in the Arctic in Sweden. So it's like a, a very far away from Stockholm. It's a very long uh, country. And, and definitely, and 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 we uh, like when looking at the specific questions that were happening in Sweden, we recognized that Kiruna was a place where lots of different issues were um, happening at the same time, connected to natural resources, connected to attachment, connected to um, to questions of preservation, but also questions of land ownership and indigenous population and indigenous um, land rights uh, um, in the in the region. This is a, an image of the exhibition that we uh, we closed in this last February, and, uh, and and was like a yeah trying to present all these different uh, perspectives, all these different voices and, and and views that are at play in Kiruna, because um, Kiruna is this city. This is a this is an image of the city of Kiruna that is um, is basically built around the mining efforts that this is like Kiruna Bara, this is the Mount Kiruna where the where the mine is located. This is an iron ore mine, it's like the biggest underground iron ore mine in the world. Um, is a state owned uh, mine. So like uh, this, the, the state of Sweden owns the, 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 the mine, like the extraction processes and also of course the export process. It exports nationally and internationally. is one of the biggest exports of Sweden. So like uh, really getting back a lot of money to to stakeholders uh, and basically to returning to all taxpayers in Sweden. But the but Kiruna is experiencing, as as I said, like one of the what we believe one of the biggest um, um, like processes, urban transformation processes in recent Swedish history, because it's being relocated. The mine is, has grown so much, it's like a, it's, it's, it's growing, is is digging at such a deep level uh, that like the ground deformation that the mine is producing has started to jeopardize the structure of the, of the city, especially the city center, that is what we see in the foreground of the, of the photo. And uh, basically the municipality in coordination with the mine company and of course the state gave green light uh, in 2009 to, uh, to start like the process of relocation of the city center and um, therefore the city itself. The, uh, the, the ground deformation has been growing over the years at such a level that basically this is an image from 2018. So all these like, uh, like a hole that the mine has produced is actually growing and growing and growing and already affecting the first buildings that are in the first line of, uh, closer to, to the mine. This is the headquarters of the, of the mine. Um, and and uh, so we can see some images of like uh, the, the, basically the, the, the status of things in 2019. Again, this is a process that is ongoing like uh, this uh, today, they're like all, all these buildings already are demolished because a third of the population have, uh, is, um, has need to, to relocate. They are moving to another, another area of the city or to the new city center. There are a, a, a series of buildings that are being or demolished or moved. This is, a, for example, a heritage building, a heritage house built by Gustav Pickman, a, a very important architect at the beginning of the century in Sweden, that is being relocated to a new area of the city. This is like, a, a lot of housing blocks are, have been demolished. Um, um, another heritage building, heritage listed building that is being like moved and relocated. 
uh, an area that is actually um, where all these houses, those are like mining, working, housing uh, from the beginning of the century, of the 20th century, that have been all like moving to the same area. So they are kind of building like a quote unquote historical site. Um, but, and, and this, this, for example, is the, this, this is the plan, this is the, uh, the new plan of Kiruna that was a, a competition, an international competition that was won by, by white architects and Helsten architecture, Gilari Helsten. Um, and, and we can see we can see here like uh, what I mean by the relocation. This is like a, the, the aerial image of the mine. This is like a, the, the specific factory, like a, basically where all the treatment of the treatment plant is. Um, the mine, of course, is like is underground, but we can see all these holes that are produced by like uh, the ground that is being basically swallowed by the earth. And, and we can see like the areas of affection of the of the of the mine how that is like uh, starting to really affect and, and reach like the, the first areas of the, the city, but this is the plan. The, the plan that was uh, uh, like uh, presented by in the competition and won the competition and that's the plan that is being developed right now is that basically the new city center of Kiruna is here and, by, and, and the architects have imagined that by 2100 the what we know as of, of Kiruna will be basically like a, like relocated demolished and the city will be will be growing in this direction so and, and, and this is like the new city center has been like uh, started to be built already. Like the first buildings are already uh, up. Uh, this is a photo from 2018. Today, actually the buildings around this town hall, this is the new town hall of the, of the city, is already surrounded by new uh, buildings, housing blocks, but also cultural buildings, et cetera, et cetera. But all of this is happening in a land that has been inhabited by my linea, by the indigenous population of the region that are the Sami. So all these, all these, um, all these different elements. Um, as I said, we try to really bring like a specific, like a understanding of the different voices, the different perspective of what is going on with the relocation, but also trying to give, um, uh, bring some light to the con to the historical and geographical context, because it's not. Um, when we talk about Kiruna, we realize through the process that actually is not any build, any city that has been built on this on the side of a mining effort is a very specific city. And uh, for example, we were looking at a specific geographical context. Uh, one of the one of the lines of, of, of investigation of the project was to and, and trying to understand what are the tangibilities of of the of the of the the mining industry, both locally, regionally, and internationally. So we commissioned to a team that is Iwan Bang, uh, Iwan Bang and Dessing and Michiel van Jersel to, uh, to, to work precisely on what is, what is the, the journey? What is the journey that starts here? In This is the image on the top of the mountain where, where the mine uh, like a, a treatment plan is um, to to uh, like, a, like to understand like a, what is the geographical location, but also what are what are the traces of that iron that is extracted in Kiruna uh, in in the different uh, construction sites around the world. So basically, they could find these are like a series of posters that we represented in the exhibition, research posters that um, they trace back like uh, how the mine, the iron in Kiruna is actually could be found in the, in the subway in London, in the construction site, in the materials that are used in the, in the subway in London, or in the material that covers like the oil pipes that are in the Gulf of Mexico, for example, or in the high um, rises of, um, of Dubai, for example. So, so clearly like uh, the impact that has like in terms of uh, starting from architecture and finishing in architecture, um, it's, uh, it's, it's both local and, and, and international. But also um, it was also a way to understand the historical context. No? Like this, is the, this is a map uh, produced by Adolf Sodok and Maristeva uh, that working at Tulio School of Technology at the time. Uh, and then they basically mapped out how the location of Kiruna, Kiruna is the K in this map, um, uh, is actually part of what today is called the North Potnian technological mega system. That is an entire network of mines, 
of, of industrial settlements, of power stations and railroads that go from Luleå, Luleå in the coast of Sweden to Narvik in the coast of Norway. Those were made precisely to be able to uh, develop the settlements, uh, produce the exploitation of the land, distribute and transport the material to the ports, and those ports were capable to, to transfer um, the material um, abroad. Um, so, 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 so Kiruna is also a form of, of, um, of looking at, at the region. But Kiruna is also is, is, is being relocated, but also is destabilized in many different scales. For example, um, we, we were also looking at the work of uh, Hans Ragnar Mathisen, that is a, a Sami artist that has been devoting his life basically to map out Sapmi, that is like a, the region that Sami people um, like uh, live in, that is a, is a region that moves from, from, uh, from Norway, Sweden, Finland, and, and Russia. And, and what, when, we, when we look at those maps though, that was presented in the exhibition, we cannot find the word Kiruna. What we, we will find is the word Giron, that is like a, the, the name that is, uh, is used by Sami people for, for, for the city. So like uh, the, the city is being relocated, the, 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 the materials are being in circulation, but also even the names and the, and the identity of the city is also being this, um, um, in, a, in, uh, in, well, in, a, in an imbalance, no? in, 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 changing, in changing the status. Um, like, uh, and, and that comes back to, to some of the documents that we could find of the, of the origin of, of well, like the, the first drawings that we could find of uh, representing Kiruna or representing the landscape that Kiruna, where Kiruna is located today. And uh, this is, for example, a map uh, that was included also in the exhibition that is, um, is a map from 1736. That is the first time that like the Mount Kirunabara, that mount that we have we saw in the first image, that mount that was today like basically completely broken and cut out because of the mining efforts. This is the same mine that is being represented here. The same, sorry, the same mountain that is uh, represented here. And, and the first time that the, that mountain is represented is precisely through um, through a representation of the landscape with a co with a body of gray area here that already indicates from the first time that there is iron included in that uh, area. This uh, in that area. This, this is like a geological expedition. This is a document that was done for a geological expedition that was supported by the king of Sweden. And, and was a was a way to to well to study the land and study the the composition of the land and precisely after this document, uh, there is the first uh, efforts produced by the king of uh, the kingdom of Sweden to start understanding that land not as a as an area that was like unknown as it was before with some ec uh, economical exchanges but very few it was under, it start, it started to be understood as a place of, um, of, of, uh, of resources, a place where that needed to be um, studied, needed to be controlled, needed to be claimed, exploited, and, and, uh, and developed. Uh, uh, like some years later in 1847, we, we could find also this document that is like a claim map, is a, is a map that indicates how those, those sections of the mountain, in this case, this is Jelibare in Malberia, a very close by body of ore to Kiruna, that with a very similar uh, story that basically claims the, 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 the land in order to be exploited. And, and that, uh, like, uh, that process, that, li that line of work um, ends up being in the first settlements of, uh, in the first industrial settlements and around the, the body of ore, that is this, this gray like lines over here, the first industrial settlements that are built on the site of the iron body in order to be um, mining uh, at the, in, in the surface at the beginning. And this is, a, this, is a, this is the beginning of Kiruna. This is like a, the beginning of what we know today as the city of Kiruna. This is like the first settlements of that, of that project. And as, as I was saying, like what is interesting about, um, about the city of Kiruna is that uh, it really is um, uh, um, um, uh, uh, a settlement that becomes an important 
uh, city for Sweden. Um, because like uh, because we can we could trace back how from the very beginning at the beginning of the century uh, like uh, the, the city of Timon is understood as a place where the most important architects and designers and artists are going to be um, working with the city they are going to be designing like uh, buildings uh, and, and, and thinking about Kiruna as a, as a place that has like a, an image has a pro projection to the rest of the country. Um, from those settlements that we have seen that are like very, very like uh, basic settlements, industrial settlements at the beginning of the century, automatically um, somebody like Pedro of Halman and Gustav Bickman, two of the most important urban planners of the time, they imagine what would be like the, the urban, urban plan of the, of the city. Gustav Bigman would, would be also building like a, like a wooden church that is still today in Sweden, one of the most important wooden buildings, uh, largest wooden buildings in the country. Um, and uh, like somebody like Helmer Oslund, Axel Tornemann, Carl Wilhelmsson, they are all like first level artists of the time that are invited to Kiruna to represent the industrial effort and the industrial like uh, advancement of the city. So, we kept on asking ourselves when we were doing this project is like, why, why Carl, somebody like Carl Wilhelmsson, like, a, like one of the most important artists of the time, uh, like a, goes to Kiruna far, far away in the north of the north to, to draw, um, to, to, to do a painting like this one. And, and, and we come back to, to that argument, like the argument that Kiruna becomes uh, an image um, that legitimizes some, for some certain forms of uh, colonization but also represents a specific forms of uh, like a image production for Sweden is like is a place that really projects that it has a symbolism that goes beyond the needs of the mining efforts it operates at another level so there is like a kind of like a, an important value that is implemented in the city that has to do with not not the the needs of the of the workers not the needs of the uh, exploitation of the land are connected to a state values, to a state directions, to, to the idea of how the state is um, perceived and projected to internally, but also externally. And that continues to happen during the entire 20th century. We, there is like a, these are all collections from the museum. There is like a series of, of projects during the 1960s that are like of, of uh, very high quality, Hakun Alberi, um, like a built like a you know like a very banal building this is just like a you know like a hoisting and separating plant but is uh, built designed built and photographed and disseminated as a work of art understood as as part of a, a project of modernization of industrialization of the country and represented as such in, in, in many different magazines or the lkb that's the, the name of the state company headquarters located in front of the mine, in front of the mountain, and like uh, also kind of representing the modernity um, as uh, arriving to the to the north of Sweden. Um, and, and there are many other examples, uh, Oriol Luning, Ralph Dahlström, like industrial industrial buildings that really like uh, like would would have been completely banal in other cases in the case of of Isbapavara, Kiruna that are all like a uh, um, mining uh, expo uh, efforts like um, in the same area they are they all have that kind of level of, of symbolism um, and years to it the same happens with uh, with uh, Ralph Erskine, a very important architect that from the UK that moved to Sweden and, and developed like an entire practice, uh, an entire body of work connected to the north and taking Kiruna as the petri dish to imagine new forms of of housing and, and, and urban planning uh, in the in the Arctic, of course, with certain tropes of uh, of the north as a, that exotic space. So I mean, we, we can spend lots of time talking about the Ralph Erskine and the north, uh, but 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 um, but the reality is that he also developed an entire practice, uh, an entire distribution of materials. Also, he 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 became very very uh, very well known precisely by the ecological arctic town that he, he was inspired 
and based on on the on the on the studies that he did around Kiruna. So again, Kiruna is that space, that that city that many architects have imagined the future uh, with, and but at the same time uh, was um, was a place where all these all these transformations of the land were put, being produced. Well, first can end up building a couple of buildings, one in Spapavara, um, that today uh, and, and uh, today is actually half of the building. So, like, um, there is also like a big, big question, precisely very presented, uh, very present in the discussion today, of what happens with all these buildings that had great ambitions, but today, for example, the half of this building is already demolished. Um, uh, like, Spapavara is a very, very small town with uh, even migration questions. And there is a, a big, big polemic and discussion about what happens with these uh, buildings that are like a, today having like a different attitude and a different mm, relationship with the, with the population. But also in Kiruna itself, Kiruna, in, in Kiruna, Rathers can build very recognizable uh, building, housing, housing blocks uh, in the city center that are called Ortrivaren. And this building that is considered one of the best buildings of Ralph Ferskin in Sweden is going to be demolished uh, very soon. If it's not next year, it will be the following the following year. They, uh, they are located in the in the area very close by to the mine. Um, and, and, and we argue that actually that process of understanding Kiruna as that kind of a symbol, symbolic uh, effort, uh, like uh, in between the um, like, uh, like giving giving goods for society, but also legitimizing certain certain uh, process of sacrifice that, that the area is producing, that continues today. This is like the new city hall, the new building, also an international competition inviting. Uh, like uh, many different offices uh, internationally to 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 imagine what the future of Kiruna will be, are uh, participating of that process and building a new city. Um, uh, I mean, like uh, the uh, yeah. So, so the, the the relocation of Kiruna is one of the most important urban projects, as I was uh, as I was saying in recent Swedish history. And, and not only because of the complex operation of moving an actual city, but also because it mobilizes critical questions of global relevance. The citizens of Kiruna have been forced to face extraordinary philosophical questions. What constitutes a city? Where do I belong? What should we preserve? What should we sacrifice? Big questions that conflate, um, uh, big questions that conflict, conflate transcendental issues between the old and the new, between what needs to be demolished and what needs to be built, about who owns the land and who belongs to the city, losses and hopes, displacement and attachment. The, re the relocation demands a reconciliation among different communities and also among different communities' needs. Some of them are struggling to detach themselves from a historical servitude um, to the mine, but also um, some of them diametrically opposed to the fact that the land is being exploited at all. The challenges of building a new city also poses questions about the reasons for the relocation in the first place. Why should we prioritize the extraction of minerals over the stability of a city and its citizens? Um, what, uh, what are the limits of economical growth? How much longer can we continue digging? Um, and one of the cases that I think for this conversation can be interesting um, is the the old town hall in Kiruna. This is a this is an image of the old town hall. That is a town hall that was designed by Artur von Esmaliensi, like a 90, you know, like 60s, 70s, uh, very very important architect in Sweden. The the building received. Like uh, it was, it was finished in 1963, and it received like the most important architectural national award in 1964, the Casper Sal Stalin Prize. Um, the building was really incredible, with lots of different collaborations with many relevant artists, with craftsmen, craftswomen that were like at first level in, in Sweden, and, and with a lot of different details uh, in the building. It was uh, it was uh, listed as heritage uh, soon after, and, and 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 also was very very well like uh, perceived by the by Kirunians themselves. Like uh, as a, was a place that was very well used, with lots of events. Uh, it was uh, like uh, Kirunians used to say of it, like uh, that was like the living room of the um, 
of the city. Unfortunately, the building was located in uh, in a, in, a in an area that was uh, very very close by to the ground deformation zone um, of the mine. And so, after many many different uh, litigations, uh, the heritage listing was um, lifted, and the, and the and the building was demolished in two thousand nineteen. These are like a couple of photos of uh, by Klaus Steinmann that we commissioned uh, like precisely to document uh, also like the, the demolition of the building for the collections uh, at the museum. Um, and like uh, the, 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 and this is an image of the exhibition because one of the, one of the big efforts that we produced uh, for the exhibition is precisely, this happened in the middle of the organization of the exhibition. This was 2019, we were about to open like a year after. So, um, so uh, like in order to really address this question, uh, we, we op like uh, the, the exhibition had an entire area of the exhibition that was called Origin Heritage that was precisely addressing what are the, um, yeah, what are the conflicts that really produce questions of preservation in the city and taking the town hall as a case study. Because like a, an interesting point about the, the building is that it was not only an amazing piece of architecture with a really special uh, like uh, features, architecture features and architecture like uh, elements. Uh, it was also like a place where um, many different events happened. Uh, as I said, like it was very well used by the by the by the, com by the community, but uh, but also um, it was like a place where um, that that served as um, as a uh, as the as the scenario for very important events. So so in 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 the exhibition we could in collaboration with uh, with the Kinuna municipality we could save some materials from the demolition. So 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 the balconies that you see here, the textiles. The lamps, uh, the um, like uh, the, uh, the the entire lectern, the materials of the lectern, the the, the sculpture balcony, all the curtains, all these are like a, um, uh, in, uh, they are saved uh, salvage from from the demolition, like a, uh, reconstructed in real scale. Um, in the in the exhibition and then returned to Kiruna to be reused in, in other in other buildings uh, organized by the by the municipality. And we decided to to reconstruct exactly this section of the building because as I was saying, some of the events that happened in the building were very transformational for not only for Kiruna but also for the region and for Sweden. Especially there was there was a very important event in 1969 that are a series of general assemblies that happened in that building and that were holding all the miners strike and that it's, and it's known by all Swedes by the great miners strike of the 69. There's a series of uh, or like a series of days, 57 days wildcat miners strike of uh, in 1969, which uh, coming with, uh, with miners from from Kiruna, from Svapavara, from Malberiet, that we're all assembled together in the building in order to, um, to have like a general assembly and to, to, to make decisions and to push for decisions uh, to, the, to the company um, of labor rights that is still today are in place in Sweden, right? So, so um, we, we commissioned to Ingole Johansson, an artist uh, from Sweden that has been working precisely on questions of miners' strikes before, and uh, to to do um, a film, to do a piece that could be could could be a reconstruction of those days of those events that happened in the building, uh, like uh, holding uh, hosting uh, these these discussions, these strikes. So really putting in, into emphasis the importance of also not only the architectural details and physical components of the of the reconstruction and the building itself, but also the, the events that it held as a, as a, as a building and, and like a, em, emphasizing like the importance of preserving at certain level uh, actions and performances that are part of the, of the history of the building. Uh, what, we, what we do is that we re reconstruct the entire section um, of, of that, of the, of the building where like the lectern were done where precisely the, 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 the speeches that were given and, um, uh, were held so this is this mic is is 
in this mic and with the same lectern, like the original lectern that we could bring from Kiruna, from the, um, like say from the demolition. And we presented the film uh, exactly at the spot where you will be walking up the stairs, positioning yourself as if you would be talking uh, to the General Assembly and you would see the reconstruction of that those days in that, in that screen. And then the uh, and then there was like a, a like another level of the project that was also including like a, a performance that was also uh, like that's a work by Ingela Johansson as well that basically is like a, the the reenactment of the speeches that were given in the strike uh, in the miners' strike uh, in Kiruna uh, in in 1969 by Sarah Lidman that is like a super important like a writer in in Sweden. And, and and talked uh, like in as part of the those um, general assembly days so um so this is a this is a case of of how like a you know like a, a building that has like a specific story um we try to really address what are what are the implications what are the questions of sacrifice and and, and saving and, and preserving and, and 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 keeping and, and including in the in the certain legacy and certain memory of uh, of the discussion in, in the public realm through the through the exhibition. Um, a second a second line of uh, of of work with preservation can be also understood with the work of Joar Nango. Uh, part of the project was also to commission new work, commission uh, new projects uh, for for the uh, for the exhibition. And we collaborate with uh, Joar Nango. Joar Nango is today, uh, I think, like one of the most important Sami architects uh, that that, um, that are practicing. He's a, he's an architect, but also operates between art and architecture. And and he's a great uh, speaks person for the role of Sami architecture in contemporary architecture today. And he he developed like a he has been working with a with a long term project that is called Girje Gumpi that is the Sami architecture library that is a is a is a nomad is a movable moving library um, that basically moves in diff to different places opens up everywhere it goes. And has like a more than two hundred uh, like uh, volumes um, connected to architecture, to Sami architecture, to indigenous culture, to indigenous uh, architecture, and and it serves also a place of discussion, a place of uh, of uh, well of, uh, of addressing the the issue of the relevance of of um, of Sami architecture, and we invited him to to have like another another iteration of the project. Uh, this was like in the pandemic year, so we 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 decided to move that that uh, that library to uh, to the virtual realm so you can actually visit it it's like a that, um, virtual gumpi that space and 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 is a way also to think about questions of um, preserving specific forms of culture and specific forms of knowledge and uh, for for joar is very important to to think of this project as a place of encounter as a place of keeping together a certain knowledge and, and and growing knowledge together about sami architecture but also uh, understanding and discussing what are the possibilities for 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 sami architecture to be relevant to be relevant today and to be important in questions of how do we deal with nature how do we deal with resources etc cetera, etc cetera. um we uh, like um, like uh, as, I, as I was saying, like uh, the, the ongoing relocation of Kiruna is a long and complex threat, going back hundreds of years and reaching from the northern lands of Sweden to the rest of the planet. It's also a very real and striking, sometimes dramatic experience for those living in the city. The dialogue around the relocation continues to have multiple, strong, juxtaposed, often often contradictory perspectives. But here is the greatest dilemma. Kiruna is not only being relocated three kilometers, it is moving at a time in which Sweden and the planet's northern regions face fundamental change, initiated in 2004, beginning to find its forms into 2020, and planned until 2100. The current relocation, construction, and definition of the new city in the Arctic embodies the dreams and aspirations of contemporary Sweden. Kiruna confronts us with the need to totally redefine our values when it comes to how we address global warming and reinterpret the notion of attachment in a world of forced and non-forced migration. It calls upon uh, to renegotiate with indigenous peoples and to reconfigure our understanding of sovereignty. 
ultimately it forces us to address the ways in which we privilege economic growth above all else. We are witnessing how the relocation of Kiruna, a challenge initiated 15 years ago, is finally taking shape. The first buildings are being built and the new city center begins, begins to become a reality. But we should not consider the project finished or untouchable. Kiruna embodies the hopes and dreams of the 21st century and shows us the tools we need to equip ourselves here and elsewhere to face the challenges ahead. Thank you. Fantastic. Carlos, thank you so much. This was what a um, uh, number of issues that you put on the table that are really significant um, for us to think about. Um, and um, we have a little bit of time for Q&A. Um, so those of you that are on the call, I was just going to say, please um, just type your name or, you know, if you, you want to ask a question in the chat, and then we'll call on you, um, you know, just say, I don't know, stack or a question or whatever you want to say, um, or if appropriate, I think that's the easiest way for us to, to handle this as you think about, you know, question or a comment or a thought. Um, but I'll just get us started over here as everybody mulls over, the, you know, their, their questions to talk a little bit about this question of your, I wanted to hear more about this strategy that you put on the table of reconstructing, but also salvaging certain key pieces of the building that in a sense, the, they're pieces that can represent or encapsulate or, 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 or be the charge of um, a symbol, you know, of the whole building. Uh, the lectern and other things. And, and um, then you also reconstruct it around that to kind of supplement that object with enough so that it could do what you wanted it to do. Um, I, that's a, you know, a very interesting experimental preservation practice. Uh, you presented others in terms of the kinds of works that some of the artists did, but I wanted to focus on that one in particular, the idea of saving a piece of the building moving it to a different place and activating it through performances, actions, and so on as part of the museum. That is not, if you go to a traditional, let's say, art exhibition, normally the objects are looked at. They're not used and performed. Um, so it's quite a radical, you know, from a museological standpoint, it's quite a radical, uh, you know, method. So I wanted to hear more about, you know, how did you come upon that? Where was it, you know, what were you trying to do and how does it sit with people? You know, did people understand the importance of this object? Did they latch onto it? What happened to the object afterward? I want to hear all about it, you know, what, you know <laughs> beginning right. to end. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it, it all begins with, um, like the, the, the question of circulation in Kiruna is very important, right? Like uh, mm -hmm. extraction in Kiruna not only is about the iron that is, taken out from the ground and exported somewhere else. Mm -hmm. there, is, there is a lot of um, dynamics that have to do with uh, periphery and center. Um, Kiruna is in, a, in, in the north of the north and, and it's, an, it's, it, it's uh, the, the people living in the north, uh, they have a very strong um, perspective and experience of how um, like a knowledge, um, a, a economy, um, and materials are being extracted, right? And 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 that the the, uh, the value always ends up being in in Stockholm, in the in the capital, and and that relationship between the center and the periphery was very strong from the very beginning when I was uh, when I was doing research for for the project. So, so the, the idea of, of establishing specific forms of circulation that was going in and out uh, from between Kiruna and Stockholm were very important from, from, from the very beginning. That's why, for example, we developed like an entire uh, um, collaboration with a museum in Kiruna, like the Consmosetti Nord, that is a museum that is located in the new city center, actually. And, and there was like a lot of exchange of, of information, of materials. Um, the, for example, um, there was like a, a, a lot of uh, questions about original materials that the museum had that the Kiruna municipality didn't have about 
buildings that were done in Kiruna. So there was like a lot of work of producing certain form of exchange between the two institutions, right? So that, that idea of circulation, that idea of how things move and how objects like travel from one place to the other was like very much into the, into the table. And, 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 and basically it was a form of, that's why we call it origin heritage because uh, at, in, the mid, in the middle of doing the research, basically we received the information, okay, the, build, the town hall is gonna be demolished. It's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. It's, it's already approved, it's gonna be happening in the next uh, months. So, so, so we felt that, that that story was like a very important to tell, very, very, it was a very clear, it was a good way to really bring up to the public discussion, something that is very striking, that a building at that level was going to be demolished. And is a building that all of us in Sweden have been supporting uh, by giving, giving it like a national award. So, so I, I thought that like the contradictions that were produced, like they encapsulated in the building were really, really powerful and really capable to tell like the importance of architecture, the importance of preservation, how preservation is connected to all of us. It's not something that some specific professionals deal with. It's something that citizens have some sort of connection with what should we, should we preserve or not in a city. So it's kind of, it was like kind of a, uh, a fast forward case study of what does it mean to, 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 to have a specific attachment with a space or with a building. So, so um, and, and that's where like uh, all the collaborations with the different networks of people started to happen. And, and we could, we could um, like uh, one of my first impetus was like, I mean, the National Museum should be like uh, preserving, should be taking care of some of the materials that are gonna be lost because they're gonna be demolished and nobody's gonna like, a, like a have that space or that material or that, that piece of the, of, the, of, the, of the building anymore. But then all the questions about what is the role of a national museum in relationship to these questions? What can you preserve of a building that is enough to preserve the building? Questions of what are the limits of representation of a specific project with a specific um, uh, uh, um, fragments? All these questions came to place, so so that's why all the questions about the actions, the performances, the events that were happening started to become very important. So so it's a combination of of of, of uh, self salvage material that for me was very important. That was like circulating back to Kiruna, right? So actually, we haven't left, we haven't put anything in the collections. We thought that that was not the role of the museum in that sense. It was more like the role of bringing up the the discussion, bringing up the conversation of what is important to preserve in a city, rather than that specific material. Um, and that allowed us to, to have like a very, it's true, experimental cases of how art is perceived in a museum. Like a, that's why you could touch all these things. Like a, it was like a very direct, you could see it in uh, some of the, we also have, so, have some benches that were original from the, from the building. You could also sit on them. So it was like a lot of like usability of those, of those objects that for me was important because the career, like a, for, for like a, like one of the goals of the of the of this reconstruction for me was like a, the the general audience should have like a some kind of like a physical connection to that building and how can we like uh, achieve that and that physical connection uh, like uh, I, I understood or i thought that like uh, the lectern was the right spot it was the place where like uh, the, the the public these speeches were given where the most public components of the building were performed in a daily basis. That's where the mayor talked to the, to the citizens when, they, when he was talking. Um, that's where all the main, the, 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 you know, like the main public speeches were given. So, so that's why for me was like that, that was the concentrating spot, was the place where we needed to work around. And, 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 and the work of Ingela Johansson of the reconstruction of the striking of the mining, miners strike was also very important in that process because it's, it, was a, it was a way also to connect to, to, to things of another time, but important today that still are, are, are echoes from the past that are as important as the, the, the handrail 
right? So that that also that understanding that uh, that um, architecture is not only important because of its aesthetics, it is important of, of other components. For me, was also um, uh, for us uh, in the in the team was uh, was very important. So, so yeah. So uh, I'm actually that, that's one of the things that I'm more more excited about in the in the project. We thought that we could manage to bring several several parts that for us were important to discuss into into one specific case study. Okay. We have a that's thank you, uh, Carlos. We have a question from Zihao. Yeah, hello. Hello. Yeah, hello. Um, I have a question basically about the relo uh, relocation issue of the Kiruna. Because uh, uh, the reason, like original reason for the relocation of Kiruna is because they want to expand the um, iron ore mine in that mountain, right? So they need to leave more space for the um, development of the industrial stuff. So my question is, as for the new planning stuff of the um, uh, town Kiruna, uh, how the plan could reply to the environmental effect of the expanding iron ore, because I know that is uh, have some um, environmental issues near the near the iron ore miles. Sorry, what what how the plan the plan can sorry I did sorry can you repeat? yeah yeah because um like uh because for example my hometown like my hometown also have very large um coal ore mine and like around it it is always like air is very polluted water is very polluted. Yeah. So how the plan of the new town can reply to this kind of environmental impact? Right, right. So, so well, so that's, that's a very good question. And, and, and I, I think that, um, uh, in fact, it doesn't really respond to it. I think that basically separates from it. Um, like uh, the decision is made to, to relocate the city like uh, three kilometers away not as a as a way to um, address the impacts of the mine uh, in the in the in its surroundings it's basically to make sure that the houses that are built are not swallowed by the earth literally so so the and and, and that really tells a lot about the power structures of a city like kiruna in which there is like the kiruna municipality that advocates for all the citizens of the of the of the city but also lkv that is like the mining company that uh, basically advocates for the mining company to be operative and yes, um, address the specific sustainability processes, right? And, and, and there, is a, there are a lot of efforts that are made by the mining company to be less pollutant and to work less um, with, with materials and, 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 and processes that are a little bit more sustainable. Yes, but in, at, the, at the end of the day, basically for me, like the, the, the big impact that of course it's it's connected to the the pollution that is produced, but the big impact goes much much farther than that. Like the impact of mining in the land is is very very deep in many different layers of society. For example, uh, like a, like the the whole like um, Sami culture is against the fact that the 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 land where they have been living for so many times so many years. Is even touched. That's a, that's a sustainability process. That's a sustainability question that are is not addressed by any of those questions, and definitely not addressed by questions of pollution. Pollution, yes, is an is an element of that process, but not only. No. So 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 the new plan, I think, uh, um, it's it's actually not responding to that point. It's trying to imagine like a new future for the city making sure that the process of mining continues and, and, and keeps on going. Right? Yeah. One of the big questions that I always ask everybody I met uh, in the process is like, why nobody asks why we stop mining? Like why that question is not even in the table, no? So I think, I think that, that's, that really tells a lot of, of, the, of, the, of the realities of, of a city like this. And, 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 and I'm sure that you, you have a, a very good, good experience with, with your, well, good, I don't know, but you have the experience with, with your hometown for sure. That, that's, yeah, a good segue, that's a good segue to the next question that we have uh, from Professor Avrami. 
Carlos, thank you so much for a very provocative project and, and informative presentation. And um, you know, I, I commend your team um, for the depth and breadth of research that was done in order to bring this um, to fruition. Um, but I, I'm wondering if you can expand a little bit on the, the, the use of, of we, when you talk about we, sort of um, as architectural historians, preservationists and others, it's very easy for us to ascribe architectural value to a place and to use our archival which are sometimes very exclusionary forms of research to identify social value uh, within a place. But how was public engagement um, conceived or undertaken before the exhibition? I, you know, there's great sort of interaction as a result of the exhibition, and maybe that in and of itself is a way of understanding social value, but I'm wondering whether there was anything in advance of the exhibition that really informed um, how value was being ascribed to that place and to its components. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for, for the question. I, I think, I mean, um, Kiruna, like the relocation of Kiruna is a, is a well-known event in Sweden. Um, if you ask anybody, uh, or you asked anybody before the exhibition was done, like a, uh, there, there was like a general assumption in in um, in the in the in the two thirds of or in the third of Sweden that is in the southern area of Sweden that is basically where all the big cities are located that is where like the capital is located. There is a general understanding of what is going on in Kiruna and and, and the way media portrays the, portrayed that kind of relocation was by saying the city is being moved right. So uh, um, and 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 through like a, the first section of the research that we in the museum, when I say we here is like a, the museum team, like a team of uh, people working with National Museum of Architecture and Design in Sweden. The first section of the research was about trying to understand a little bit better, like a, um, what was the what are were like the discussions and the, the and the groups of 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 uh, you know of, of uh, thought in in locally in Kiruna and that's why we collaborated with the Kiruna municipality and with the with the Konsmosetinor with the museum and and was like a yes there were like a specific discussions happening about questions of preservation precisely that was one of the biggest lines of discussion like uh, there was like a uh, lots of uh, surveys produced lots of uh, public engagement in terms of of understanding what were like a references, for example, of location of the new city center. So there, there is, there is a, a large legacy of local involvement of, of different communities in order to discuss like the, the difficulties and the challenges of the relocation. But um, what we really perceived in that process was that the, the discussions were very, very present locally. The, 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 the consequences of those discussion didn't necessarily have like a very big, large impact in the decisions that were made because the decisions jumped out to another groups of power that were like connected to the state and to the state uh, owned companies, less with the municipality. And more importantly, um, the discussion about like the, the component included and, 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 and part of the disc of the context uh, historical and geographical context of the relocation of Kiruna were completely absent of the public discourse. So one of the main um, intentions of the project is precisely to open to make sure that we didn't focus on the relocation as a house that is moving on top of a of a track that is basically the image that was constantly projected by the media as a form of celebration of technology. We are capable of moving a city um, to a discussion that was more about, okay, the relocation of Kiruna today is only possible because of a historical and geographical and social context that is very complex and has to do with many questions that are not important only for Kiruna but important for Sweden as a whole. And so, so like the intention of the project and the research line and the exhibition was to bring to the general discussion and the general public that kind of complexity. 
but but of course like uh, the, the 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 precedents uh, in Kiruna are long and and complex and and deep there have been many many different groups of people and many different communities that have been exercising like um, like uh, like like lines of thought and lines of pressure precisely in different directions um, the reality today is that the city is being relocated and buildings are being demolished. So, so that's why that's we, we were trying to go to the facts of that and to try to open it up to the public, to the general public. Right. Th thank you, Carlos. Um, thank you for sharing your thoughts, your work with us, your insights. This is such an interesting um, case. And the way you've, uh, as in your practice, the way that you show us how museological methods can intersect with preservation methods um, and, and bring, put pressure on the forms of community engagement that uh, Professor Aframi was in fact raising when they're not happening uh, is so exciting. So we look forward to seeing more of your exhibitions, more of your work um, to bring, break out of the museum into the world. <laughs> uh, I think it's a constant in your work. It's really terrific. So um, thank you so much. And thank you everyone for joining us this morning um, for, the, for, this, uh, for this lecture. Okay, terrific. Thanks thank so you so much. much. Thank you so Take much. Take care, everybody. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you.